Stefan. Fiddling with my camera so I get back to the close one. <laughs> Hi, Venetia. Hello, Stefan. Wonderful that you're coming to talk to me today on Join a Vision Meets. And let me introduce you. You're Stefan Friedman from Ipswich. Well, you're living in Ipswich at the moment. And you're the founder of World Dance. And you and your wife, um, Bethan. <laughs> You were amongst the first sacred dance teachers in the world, I gather. And um, now you, I looked on your website, it says world dance is like having a wardrobe of a thousand colourful costumes, some velvety, some outrageous, some impressive, some humorous to try on. And the key notes are celebration, rapture and community. So Stefan, over to you. <laughs> yeah, I, I as well as that, I've I've been moving very much in the direction of um, therapeutic experiences that um, enable people to find the sort of uh, the the serenity and the feeling of wellness inside. So it does it connects very naturally with your project about wellness and with your inner vision. Yeah. Yeah, and and the vision side also is represented by the um the stories in the dancing, which uh, because we inhabit different characters, you know, we could, we can be um a mythical creature in one dance, and we can be someone from Eastern Europe for a little while in another dance, and we actually our vision expands of who we are and what our potentials are. Mm -hmm. Um. So. I just thought I'd leap into the deep end, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so starting in the shallows a bit. Um, so when 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 did you first start that off? Was that in the eighties? That oh gosh, I've, you, <laughs> memory questions are the hardest ones for me. <laughs> <laughs> I was born at an early age. Let me see. What do I remember? <laughs> <laughs> I started. Um, I started calling for barn dance type dancing in my 20s while I was playing playing with uh, playing music with a Cayley band we were doing mostly Irish music and I found that I loved the sequences of dances remembered them easily and kind of liked shouting them out um, but I was getting more and more enamored of East European dances and dances with music that seemed to me to somehow touch deeper chords um, and learning it just for my pleasure and quite honestly it was at times therapy it got me through some difficult times so that when I started teaching um, they were the dances I wanted to focus on it was circle dances <clears throat> and that was in the early 80s I just started one evening class in Shepherd's Bush London where I was living at the time and that was never going to be my work because I was lucky if I made enough to cover the rent and the and the fruit juice, you know. Is, it, is there a difference between um, your dances and I seem to remember there was something called Dances of Universal Peace. I don't know if they're still going or... They're never... going strong. Yeah. Absolutely, they are. Um, there's a crossover. Dances of Universal Peace always um, invite the, the participants to sing, those who are comfortable singing. Then mostly, or many of them are in couples and it's very relational. They tend to be fairly slow and easy-ish because you need that if you're singing the dances and you're connecting with people, making eye contact. Circle dance, um, which some people call sacred dance, is a hugely broad umbrella. It involves some very fast, fiery, intricate dances. Um, gypsy dances, 
um, I choreograph dances to all kinds of things like blues music, reggae music, um, and the the variety of tones of music on the recordings couldn't be reproduced by people singing with a guitar. So we do do some live music, but we we dig into the the treasury of music that's out there, which leaves us free to embody the dances in more intricate ways, sometimes using hand movements, sometimes quite fast foot movements. And there are always easy dances interspersed so that everybody everybody gets to play. <laughs> and we consider that all variations, at least in the process of learning a dance, all variations are very welcome, just as we find those variations inside us and try and welcome them, welcome them home rather than you know, uh, we might notice judgments arising, but we just let those go because they're not serving us. So it, there, there's a sort of implicit philosophy as well uh, about diversity, acceptance and self-discovery mm. through dance. And you, up, up until um, travel restrictions were in place, you travelled globally with um, teaching, did you? Yes, with, with, with some misgivings about the carbon footprint, but it seemed to be of, of such significance and value to people who received us and invited us and to us in our hearts. It just felt right. It felt like a way of, you know, the very most valuable things that we had to offer seemed to be in that. But actually we have done a lot of... Um, we hardly had time really to uh, think things over until lockdown and that gave us well theoretically it gave us time although I did write a book and start doing zoom events <laughs> but um, <laughs> it gave us it gave us a prompt to reflect about everything and we are not planning to do global traveling in our future possibly one swan song event in a lovely place in Greece if it works out but generally, um, I've refocused on my local community and found all kinds of doors opening in front of me before I even knock on them. It's so strange. Mm, uh, can you tell me a bit, bit about those doors which have opened? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's really funny. You just start walking and there's doors. Stefan, come over here. Look, we, we could do with a bit of Stefan. Uh, no, no, come over here. I've Trying a, an experiment because I love free dance, free expression dance, and I like structured dance. And I've got friends who tend to veer one way or the other and don't necessarily enjoy both. So we're in a huge hall where we can have one area for people who want to free express, one area for people who want to learn circle dances with Stefan Friedman. And you can switch between the two and try both if you like. Love and I to tell you what's coming up because um, I'm excited about it. The um, I guess the next thing in time, I'll see. I don't know how much you'll see on your screen. There's an African Cultural Day in Ipswich. It's on a Wednesday, and that's because it's a school half term. It's the tw the twenty seventh of October, in the afternoon from one till six. There's going to be drumming, dancing, singing food, um, artwork, arts and crafts. There'll be a play area for children. There's going to be a huge, colourful, creative map of Africa with stories and objects related to different areas. And there are many people involved from the African diaspora community um, and other folks like me who just happen to love this kind of activity and have some relevant um, skills and interests that can feed into it. So uh, everybody's welcome to that, by the way, and it's a free event. You don't need to book or anything. You can oh. drop in for an hour, come for the whole afternoon. But two days after that, which is the 29th of October, there is one of the regular Friday sessions with the Inside Out community. And I'm intrigued to find that a lot of people I meet have never heard of the Inside Out community. So I'd love to say just a brief word. No, I have never heard of it. Oh, wow. Oh, Venetia. It's one of the hidden treasures of Ipswich. <laughs> and it's, um, it's, a, it's something that started as a tiny acorn and it's 
turning into an amazing oak tree. So um, around 15, 16 years ago, a very small group of people decided to initiate an independent, not government funded project in Ipswich called Inside Out to support people receiving mental mental health care or support living in the community. That was the original idea and they wanted to do it by offering a range of creative activities because the, their experience and their, their vision was that rather than focusing on the past and all the things we're struggling with, let's focus on whatever competence we have, even if it's just the competence to turn up and be there and expand it and explore it and see where it goes. And it's building layers of social confidence, um, having experiences that, that put you in touch with your feelings, your creativity and a group where everything is accepted, nothing is required. You can turn up halfway through, you can watch or you can join in. You know, basically, you can be yourself and whatever yourself is. If you're hearing voices, you don't have to hide the fact um, because that is also a way that some people live. And it's yeah. um, we don't know what that means, whether it's a gift or a challenge or both. So nothing is judged and everything is tolerated. And at the same time, we learn how not to impinge on other people so they enjoy that same freedom and feel safe so it's a lovely project yeah. and my skills have been involved uh, music dance um, and other things like the hero's journey I've been able to feed into that uh, and the group is now receiving national attention and funding because the, the traditional conventional um, ways of helping people struggling with the emotional or mental health are not providing demonstrable results, but Inside Out is. Mm. And some of the people who came in very fragile um, have built up their confidence and skills to the point where they're now working and helping others. They're working for Inside Out and helping others. It's quite an amazing project. Mm, sounds great. And would you so say... on, the 20, on the 29th, sorry, I keep <laughs> bubbling away. On the 29th of October at 10 o'clock, if you like, come along to the um, to my session with Inside Out, which is an open session of dance. And just Google Inside Out Ipswich and, and find all the all the things that they're doing. Sounds great. And if, if somebody was to say, you know, they maybe have been working with people with mental health challenges and things. Um, what would, would be the key, if you could sum it up, what Inside Out offers, which perhaps some of these other things you would say doesn't quite do? Many, many creative avenues. The creativity, you would say, is the main thing. There. No expectation to kind of process, consciously process the stuff that you've been dealing with. It's almost... Uh, an oasis in that desert and just a chance to feel like wow I know how to feel pleasure I know how to feel uh, part of a group and accept it just the way that I am and last time I felt like dancing but today I just feel like sitting and no one's going to kind of quiz mm. me about that so it's that full full acceptance of being mm. how, however you turn up on the day is how yeah. you are and that's not going to be expected to perform or do anything else. Yeah. The uh, I guess the only expectation, and it, it tends to happen without anything being said, is the kind of the art of accommodating. So that, you know, if, if what I want to do is to shout loudly all the time, I'll find that that's not getting positive feedback. So I start to be more of a listener. Mm. But it's not taught. It just seems to happen organically. Mm. And that, in a way, links into something else you've done, which is Ipswich Air, act, <laughs> active in a response, which again um, is a more meditative kind of setting. Would you like to explain about that and where that came from? I would love to because it's some it's it's another one of these hidden hidden things hidden that you, just, you know if you didn't happen to be digging in that spot you wouldn't really find it. Um, 
there's an associate a worldwide association called Subud, which is a contraction of Susila Buddhi Dharma, and it essentially means living in accordance with your own essence. Started in Indonesia, and it it started from um, one guy who received spontaneous movements and sounds along with a feeling of safety, benevolence and bliss. So although he was rather surprised by it and even wondered whether he might be have this might be like the call to the end of his life. He was just a young bookkeeper, no, no nobody special or fancy. Um he he went along with it with a feeling of trust because his inner feeling seemed to be saying this is this is okay. And as these movements repeated and developed, he said, "Well, I'm fe I'm feeling I'm really feeling a sort of a benefit. Um, it seems it's a, I'm feeling more connected with everyone and everything. Is this something I can share?" And his understanding was, "It's okay to share it so long as you don't push it at anybody." So it's one of these things that spread slowly, but somehow managed to jump over around the world. It became an international association and has been through the process that so many associations go through, where something that was very free and open-ended has acquired its own uh, in-house culture and ideas, and to some extent, I would say boundaries, which um, at a certain point, I felt so uh, not <laughs> in tune with that I opened a different window to the same experience and called it air, active inner response. Not as uh, not to be in competition or opposition or anything with the Subud network, but really just to open another window for people into that experience. And that was based in Ipswich and ran continually for about six years until lockdown. But we haven't started it up again, partly because this man is a little bit overcommitted. And I have I have wanted since the start of it to share the hosting and the energizing um, and made all what I was hoping were all the moves in that direction. And that didn't happen. So I thought, OK, I'm just going to let it be for a bit and see what 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 does the universe want? If it pulls me or pushes me, I'll follow. But at the moment, I'm just getting, that's okay. So air, air is underground oh. <laughs> for the moment. It's, it's in a state of potential. And if anybody listening thinks, cool, that sounds interesting, please contact me and have a chat about it. It would be good to get it going again when the time's right. Um, but uh, it's interesting how um, having experienced air, myself and also experienced something called inner dance which I haven't seen anywhere recently um, um, and they both had their roots in Indonesia so mm. it's almost like there was something coming through various different people with a particular um, lineage maybe or not a lineage but some of the roots are in that particular part of the world which I found interesting. Before um... Islam got a very strong hold in Indonesia. The predominant culture was, um, they, they've got a local word for it, which I've forgotten, but it, essentially it means a synergy between all the spiritual sources and roots that, that people have taken an interest. And with particular reference to the old Hindu stories, which were transmitted through the, the shadow puppets um, mm. and shadow puppet shows and became part of, part of that everyday way of thinking there's a very spiritual spiritually open mindset in Indonesia and and a long history of people receiving why use which is sort of like revelationary experiences right. that's interesting yes I like the word why you why you do that <laughs> <laughs> why you why you they get a why you and I mean, it's interesting with you in particular because your love of these different threads from different parts of the world coming out through your dance. And now we've just said about the Indonesian thread, and I didn't know about what you've just said. Why? Um, <laughs> why you? Why you say that? <laughs> w a w a h y u. <laughs> so yeah, why you? It's a good word. Yes. Um, 
and then your own ancestry because is Jewish. Romanian um, on one side and sort of Russian Polish from uh, Belarus on the other side. So all those ancestral threads weave in through you to the dance and also your big humanitarian heart as I see it for refugees for conflict areas because I believe you did take the dance to Jerusalem was it Jerusalem or Israel you went I've um, back in the early days twi I've twice I've invited groups to Israel and on one occasion I was able to dance with Israelis and Palestinians together things were a little easier at that time a little I won't say exactly hopeful, but less, less sort of hopeless. <laughs> um, and it was, it was the most touch, deeply touching experience. Um, and on one of those two occasions, we stayed on the kibbutz where my aunt and cousins live, and they became part of the event. And oh, I'm, I'm, I'll tell you a story. It's um, just a short story. When, when we most of us travel many of us traveled together on a plane which was very very delayed so we arrived at the kibbutz at about 10 in the evening having not had an evening meal very tired a little bit frazzled and arrived at the guest house as directed and there was no one there so um i went i don't think i had a mobile or anything like that went to the place where my cousin lived and she said, oh, Sylvia's supposed to be there. I'll ring Sylvia. And Sylvia said, I don't work after nine. So, uh, oh, right. So they had an argument. My cousin's quite strong. She ended up, she turned up, but steaming and let us in, furious with us for, for putting her out. Um, and we found our way into this sort of dark place and found where the lights were. And in the morning, breakfast was served in a, in a similar mood. And um, at one point, she seemed to be screaming. Um, but what it turned out, all she was saying was, eggs, 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 because the eggs were cooked. So we didn't think, I didn't think we were going to be best friends with Sylvia. But she did eventually come to one of the dance sessions and ended up in tears. And she said, oh, now I understand what you're doing. And it turned out that she, her, her, most of her family died in the Holocaust and she clearly was dealing with it with post-traumatic stress. She was a capable person, hardworking person who drove herself, but she was also very, very reactive. But there was something in the quality of the softness of the dancing and actually the people which enabled her to drop that barrier. And that, that moment was, no one will forget it. Sylvia mm. in tears with soft eyes. Wow. Mm. Yes. I, uh, From that moment onwards, she seemed like a different person, and everyone connected with her. Mm. In fact, she could she she could drop her shield in that moment and feel yeah feel her heart again. Yeah, yeah. and then yeah. I, then I could see how hard she felt. She had to fight for her place in the world. Mm. <laughs> Mm. And it didn't really, it didn't, then it then didn't get her the feedback that she really yearned for, which was to be accepted. Mm. That was just one of many examples. Mm. With the power of dance and music. And, and an accepting attitude with it. Mm. Mm. Definitely. Gosh, yes, so many stories you could share with Stefan. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> But sometimes I like to be specific because when we give the big picture, it's sometimes hard to imagine the the feet on the ground aspect. Mm, mm. And you need your feet on the ground to dance. <laughs> mm, it took me a long time to even know I had feet because I was so much in my head as a, <laughs> as a kid. <laughs> it's been great having feet. <laughs> Um, because it's something else I saw on your website, dancing through walls, is, is that something which was in the past or is that still in the shadows or is it still a, there? Well, it's a bit like air, that it's something that I'm passionate about, which is ready to be activated at any time. Um, and the shape of my life 
is often that I follow invitations because um, I stretch myself thinly and I just don't have energy to initiate everything or you know in all the areas I'm interested in but um, dancing through walls was an idea that arose from uh, actually my friend no longer alive Naomi was very into dances of universal peace she's uh, she was from Israel but living in England and my friend Ken who is into Qigong centering and balancing energy and I we we were all interested in Palestinian Israeli um I I trying to think of the best words really but transforming the relationship into one where both sides are actually strengthening the other um validating the other and working together for a, a better future so dancing through walls was literally there's a perception wall of um, what duality, you know, it's me or you and who's going to win this power struggle, whether you're on the apparent stronger side, which is clearly Israel at the moment, or the defensive attacked um, suffering side, which is much more Palestine, whichever side you're on, that adversarial vibe doesn't seem to be providing any solutions, so we wanted an alternative. So Dancing Through Walls is the perception, the vision, and the hope that, um, including dance, song, community action, talk, um, children's activities, and all the existing organizations that are working towards that, finding ways of collaborating, that there may be uh, a pathway and so much of what is lacking, in, as far as I see it, when people try to improve the situation, is vision. There isn't the there isn't the carrot to draw you forward and to guide you into a new way. So much is referring back. Mm. So this was this was again. This is why I love the title "Join a Vision" because vision is part of action. Mm. Um, and it's part of our emotional landscape as well. It keeps hope alive. Mm. So Dancing Through Walls is more conceptual than actual at the moment, but we have had workshops at different times in conferences, um, the ones in Israel in various settings where we could actually explore the power of dance to help people feel a heart connection, even when their minds find it hard to find the common ground. Mm. And there must be different, not only the Israel and Palestine situation, but there's still those conflicts of carrying on, you know, even in closer to home, Northern Ireland, there's still a lot of trauma and anger and rage from the troubles still lingering, isn't there, in, in much and more And in so, so many places. We had the pleasure of being long ago we were invited to Belgium and we seemed to go down well and we were invited every year um, and we found ourselves working with Flemish and French speaking Belgian people who initially really were like two groups um, not hostile but just wary of each other and not in some cases not having a common language but the language of music dance and I suppose you could say the, heal, the healing atmosphere that tends to arise when you dance together for a while, including some more meditative dances, um, it seemed to envelop us. And a lot of those people are now friends, um, have found common language. Of, uh, it's hard to even remember the time when we weren't all friends. It's yeah. been lovely to see that build. Mm. So there are, as you say, that virtually everywhere you go and especially now um we seem to find that you're either this or that and the this finds it hard to understand the that mm, it's happening so, in families on the never mind yeah. nations it's happening in families and cousins and in-laws everywhere yeah and, and our response to covid yeah. tends to polarize us rather than thinking well okay you're a jab person i'm a non-jab person we're both facing the same challenge let's support one another let's love one another mm, mm, mm. 
Yeah, which is why, yeah, join a vision, as you said, the join a vision of, of bringing all those squabbling parts to, to harmony. <laughs> <laughs> as, as I hope to do inside myself, the more I see all those squabbling parts in me, the easier yeah. it is for me to accept them out there. Um, I just looking through my little list and the one, the couple of notes I made, which which, which I liked from your website, is about dancing as a moving mandala or manda. And I mm. like that because mm. Join the Vision has that logo in a way. And yes. to that in a dance is... Um, it does connect. Yeah. If and you look, say... looked from space and looked down and saw you yeah. were dancing into a moving, changing shape, it sounds rather lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm sure you know the term sacred geometry. Mm. It was really popular back in the days of you know classical classic greek history the idea that certain shapes and structures actually help us to feel harmonious and others tend to they don't <laughs> <laughs> basically almost anything natural um there's a lot of research now to show that kids who got very poor attention spans or get very agitated take them for a walk in nature and it seems like a meditation it mm. really soothes calms harmonizes so certain shapes and structures um maybe they remind us of the congruent congruence inside and our connection with everything else it's like everything has a way of being harmonized and aligned and they're definitely built into dances you might say it's almost like a kaleidoscope of cosmic forms that we move through um exploring dervishes yeah the the music also has rhythm structure and pattern both from the percussion and the melody so you've got all these sort of harmonious structures the the visual structure of the dance we usually dance around something in the center that looks lovely candles or flowers um we've got the patterns of the music and then we've got our own inner resonances all the including the sort of let's say orphaned parts of ourself maybe our anger or a very hurt little child that actually start to come become present because there is this great holding structure that feels safe so um mandala which has been a tool for supporting meditation harmony peace i think is a very good image a lot of dancers invite us to connect with our hands and that means we, we actually feel there's also a sense, literally an immediate sense of that my body is not where I end. In fact, I'm, I am a circle. I am we. And that's a lovely feeling which feeds into the mandala. Mm. Mm. And have, I know you, as you said before, you, you taught dances physically you, you traveled abroad and everything and now that's all changed and you have been teaching on zoom um but i can't quite see how you can teach dance in the way we're just talking about on zoom how huh? can you explain how that's working swing swings and roundabouts the amazing thing about zoom is that having made lovely uh, warm friends in brazil chile Italy, Greece, Canada, America, and all these places, we can all gather in one Zoom session. There's a little time difference that we allow for. <clears throat> so I set up the session so that people in California can can join without having to get up in the middle of the night. Um, and there you are seeing people that you've met from all around the world on this screen. And then I, I, I wear a red sock for my right foot and a yellow sock for my, yellow sock for my left foot to make it a little bit easier to follow in this sort of small picture. And let me go back to where we, where we started. I've got a tiny space. It's really not ideal for teaching dance, but it's just about doable. You know, you can see the hands, you can see the legs. And um, I like the candles behind me to make a little atmosphere. We make, we make the best of it. But I must say, when I dance with um, flesh and bone folks, I really appreciate it. I do like the tactile element and the proximity of people and our energy fields that we can feel more easily. 
but I have been, you know, I was a bit slow to come around to the Zoom idea. I had some resistance, but once I thought, well, I should give it a try, um, I discovered that like everything, there's it a limitation is also an invitation to find more resources. So a Zoom dance session for me has more, more live music, more of a theme so that verbal communication comes into it more, which I partly I would say compensates for the fact that you can't actually touch people yeah. and, and connect in that way. It's like we're playing all the other all the other colours and flavours are, are um, emphasised so that you don't miss that was on the theme of forgiveness. And my guest speaker was Jo Berry, but I don't know if you've come across her. Long ago her dad was killed by an IRA bomber and she decided after a while, after getting through the grief, um, she wanted to meet him because she needed to understand what was behind it. And she, all she needed to do was to get a sense of completion. But very unexpected to her, having begun in a, in a rather didactic way, telling her all the, all the sort of the philosophy of the IRA and why he thought he had to do what he did. He, more or less as she was about to leave, he said, I've never met anyone like you. You're so open and you really listen to me. And in your situation, that's amazing. And I'm really sorry that you lost your father. And mm. he was, he was, not tearful because he's not that kind of guy but she saw she saw a much softer side and they actually continued to do talks together so she was my guest on this zoom dance thing so we wove in the theme of forgiveness into the dancing and that actually made it for me and a lot according to the feedback a very deep experience even though we were at a distance in these little boxes and as we are mm. So it's given yeah. me a prompt to think, well, what else can we do to enrich and make make um, real useful that experience? Yes, and I think with Zoom as well, um, as you said earlier, different parts of your senses come in online, so to speak. So it's not so much the physical, but you can feel that shared essence between participants. Um, and when someone Even shares a story, it's yeah. not so different from being there with them. Mm. It is rather different. The dance experience is rather different. And some of us are in tiny spaces. <laughs> but we, we manage with that because there is an aspect of moving to music which complements all, all the words and the ideas and stops it from staying up there. It embodies the experience. Mm. Mm -hmm. Which brings me on to talking of being in the moment and embodying the experience, your, your Zen teacher. Mm, thank you for Meow. my Zen teacher. <laughs> yes. Now, I, I have to say this is a very good modelling of um, polarised views coming together because I know that your your receptors are very strong for dogs and mine are for cats and people often go one way or the other um, but it's nice to be uh, that you can appreciate cat receptors so first I want to mention my more recent book which is called Dance Wise which has a lot to say about what we've been talking about and many other aspects of dance for example embracing the wild inside and integrating it um, embracing timelessness with the help of music and dance um, it's got many dimensions but that was just a quick plug my first two books were both inspired by cats this was my first well other than a music book this was my first book the cat's whiskers and some of the poems are humorous some of them are somewhat philosophical some of them are a bit bonkers um, it was written for more for adults than for children, but older children seem to like it as well. And um, I don't know, I just, I hadn't actually prepared, but I just wonder if there's a sort of reasonably short one I might share. I'm just looking for one that I think would work right now. <laughs> All right.
This is called Demons of Desire. Oh. <laughs> oh, I should I should preface it when you said Zen and cats for anyone who uh, some people will know immediately what you mean. But if you're not so into cats, so you've got different receptors, receptors, um, cats are amazing role models for relaxation when they curl up in their different ways they somehow have a way of looking blissful even when they're asleep and they're completely unaware of how they might look um when they purr and respond they also look as though they're sort of they're completely in touch with that moment and every other thought past or future doesn't exist so in a way they they are very zen or they would seem to be Demons of Desire. There's something in the jaunt of your tail that shoots shivers through mine. Your jade lantern eyes and subtle scents invoke a feverish ferocity. I simply can't resist you. Oh, hang on. Uh, that's my supper call. Will you still be here later? <laughs> I just love that immediacy <laughs> and that you could say they're in touch with their own needs <laughs> they don't hold back <laughs> I think anyone who has a cat or loves cats will relate to that <laughs> yeah oh just on the just coming back to the zoom I have got a zoom coming up on the 12th of November which is slightly experimental it's called Food, Feelings and Funky Footsteps. And our guest this time is a fantastic nutritionist, nutritionist called Caroline, who grows all sorts of herbs and things in her garden and, and would like to pass on some of her own recipes that boost immunity and energy well-being. Um, we will intersperse that with dance and music to make the whole experience digestible and enjoyable. Oh. So um, contact me if you'd like to be on that Zoom. It's just, just by donation. And the following day, weirdly, which is the 13th of November, there's a five-piece Brazilian band who I'm very enamoured with, London-based, coming up to Ipswich. I'm organising that. So contact me if you'd like an evening um, of dance or music with a a five-piece Brazilian band. That's also going to be by, I think we're just going to make it by donation. Um, there's a cat-like aspect to me, which you've witnessed today, because cats can be like seemingly completely focused on one thing and then suddenly there's an invisible bit of fluff and they're completely somewhere else. <laughs> and I think I've been doing that a bit during this interval. I've been like, well, well, well. I'm just excited, really. So uh, I hope you don't mind this sort of no, mental uh... ping pong. <laughs> <laughs> the mental dance no it's not the mental it's, it's it. many, many different threads i mean you 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 love to weave so many different threads on every level so i think that is very much yeah, I, th I do thrive on variety and surprise and um in my younger days when the vistas offered on offer all seemed to be well you're this or that or you do this or you do that or you don't um I couldn't feel enthusiasm, but I get much more enthusiastic when you can be this and that and the other and a bit of this and maybe a bit of that. <laughs> as, your, as your snazzy jacket. Thank you very much. Many, many different thing. coloured threads. Joseph, yeah. and, Joseph and his amazing computing. Yeah, that was my dad's name, Joe. So there we are. It's another link. <laughs> Everything's connected. <laughs> Right, lovely. Um, anything else you'd like to share with us, Stefan, before? Well, I'm sure there is. Just give me a moment to, to think for a minute. Well, I don't know if it, I, I will share this on on Drawing a Vision. Um, New Year's Eve is the time that Bethan and I spend together, but New Year's Day I put on a Zoom event, which is not so much dance as a kind of... Um, uh, welcome to the year ceremony, which will include readings, live music, some dance opportunities, or you can watch the dancing. Um, and some of the people with poems will be reading their own poems, but relevant to the kind of like transition time into the new year, letting go of what you don't need, embracing what uh, you may be wanting to seed in the next period of time. If anyone wants to join me on January the 1st 
Um, <laughs> you January. might find that Zoom is Zoom feels a bit warmer and more community like than you expected because that's the way that we're trying to um open it up. Wonderful, great. Great. Well thanks for that, Stefan. And thank you so much for talking to me and join a vision meets. <laughs> and thank thank you very much for giving me the opportunity and and the free freedom to sort of let it flow. I appreciate that very much. Great, lovely. So I shall hopefully come to one of your events in the not too distant future. It'll be really nice to see you, Venetia. So lots of love. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>